All right. Hello and welcome to the 10th annual Wild Wisconsin Winter Web Conference. I am Leo Langby from the ITHLAS Library System, and I'm joined by uh, Sasha. I'm sorry. Ah, I'm joined by Shauna Kosecki um, from the Southwest Library System. Um, and uh, we're glad to have you all here. And our presenter for this session is Sasha Vasilik from the Niles Main District Library. He will be discussing out of the box marketing ideas. And Sasha, whenever you're ready, please go ahead. All righty, let me just share my screen. All righty. Well, hello everyone. I am super, super excited to be here today. I'm not too far from Wisconsin. Um, uh, the Niles Main District Library is right outside of Chicago. And I have a lot of family and friends in Wisconsin, so I am very familiar with the state. Um, we're going to be talking about um, a very fun topic. I love doing this presentation because um, it's, it's a really a good presentation. You don't have to think too hard, you know, and it's, it's, it's about having fun on the job and learning some, maybe some new marketing tactics. Maybe you're already using um, some of these tactics, but um, the way I see any presentation is if you leave with at least one new idea, um, you are ahead of the game uh, of trying something new at your library. So on today's agenda, um, we're going to be talking about different ideas on getting the word out about your library in your community. Uh, I will be sharing some virtual and in-person opportunities. Um, and then I'll be sharing a lot of examples from other libraries. So you can't have a marketing presentation without talking about social media, right? So we're gonna start off with the good old social media. Um, I'm starting off with um, talking about utilizing Facebook events as a somewhat out of the box marketing tactic. Um, I have to say that we kind of sort of used Facebook events pre the pandemic when there was something special going on and we really wanted to get the word out to our community. But definitely since the pandemic with the library building opening and closing and a lot of our patrons still not coming back because of the pandemic, uh, we had to figure out just like probably all of you new online ways of promoting what your library has to offer. So we started using Facebook events primarily because Regardless of how many new kids on the block, like uh, TikTok and Snapchat before it and whatever the next social network that's upon us, Facebook is still a very, very popular social network and somewhat of a guarantee that a lot of your community members are on Facebook. So what's great about promoting your events on Facebook is that uh, your events can reach both uh, your Facebook followers, but also non-followers because you can search events in Facebook um, that are local to your community. So um, I also like the, the availability of analytics to see who are these people that are viewing these events, who are saying that they're coming to them, um, you know, what their ages are. They have a lot of really great, um, you know, basic uh, analytics about the people that are um, interested in your events that you're posting on Facebook. And um, just like anything on Facebook, you can boost the events to get a greater reach uh, within your community. So Facebook events might be something you want to try if you've not tried it yet. Another, I think, somewhat out of the box marketing tactic on Facebook is something that could be potentially overlooked um, in your uh, social media strategy. On Facebook in particular, um, I'm always, I'm a little bit of a curious person. So I'm always curious um, after uh, either myself or one of my staff members posts on social media, um, like I said, particularly on Facebook, who is liking these posts? Are they our followers? Are they non-followers? Um, so I'm always interested, are they a familiar face that I've seen around the library and they're connecting with us digitally as well? Um, so, you know, upon kind of being curious, I did notice uh, a while ago that when you um, click on 
viewing everyone that liked the post. Um, on Facebook, as you can see in the graphic on the right hand side, you'll see the typical profile picture, the name of, of the person, but then all the way on the right side, you'll see a few different um, options. One option is you could tell who has already liked your page, who has liked that post. Um, and then you could also see an option, as you can see with the yellow um, arrow, there's a, a button that's called invite. So it just takes one second to press the invite button and that person will receive a notification on Facebook saying, for example, Niles Main District Library would like to invite you to like their page. So as you can see underneath it, there's a bunch of buttons that are um, grayed out that say invited, invited, invited. Um, I say it's an easy thing with the click of a button because there's a chance, depending upon how many notifications these people are getting from other pages that they follow or their family members and friends, they may overlook it. But I think for it being such a quick and easy thing, you have, um, I think, a pretty good chance of actually getting some people to actually like your, your page after inviting them. So this is a really a great way um, for uh, reaching even non-followers. If they already came that far to like your post, why not actually like our page? And you can see all of our other posts. So invite them in. Um, if in your social media strategy, you have not started utilizing the stories feature, which is available um, on Facebook and Instagram, I would highly, highly, highly suggest you start because A, it is, I think, such a great way to be creative and to incorporate some fun um, on the job. Um, sometimes our jobs can be serious and, and communicating serious things, especially with the pandemic. Um, all the openings and closings and service delays and stuff. Um, it's kind of fun to mix in a little bit of fun, I think. So I, I like stories because it really does give me uh, a, a, an avenue to be creative and to think outside the box of how I want to promote and communicate to our followers. So if you're not familiar with stories, stories are just kind of what they're called. They're like little snippets, if you will, of, um, of information in whichever way you decide you want to put out that information. There's a lot of tools, as you can see on your right hand side of you could add graphics, you could add text, you can tag other accounts, you can upload video, you can use, use GIFs. I mean, there's a lot, a lot. You can add music, which I think is very, very cool. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do in making your stories pop. Now stories, I think they're about 15 seconds each. So they are kind of these snippets, if you will, but you can have multiple stories one after another to actually tell your full story. So, you know, overall it could be over 15 seconds, but I believe every single one is um, a 15 second um, snippet. Um, the stories do disappear after 24 hours, um, but there are some ways to save those stories um, on, on uh, Instagram in particular, um, that if you wanted to save it for your own archive, but in regards to like your followers seeing it in that present moment, um, you know, if they miss it, they probably won't see it again. Um, one new aspect to stories that I'm very, very, very excited about, I think it probably started in the fall of last year, is that now on your stories, you could actually add links. Um, if you're familiar with Instagram, both personally or professionally, there was always, um, it was called, you know, everyone would say swipe up. So when you would swipe up, that would be a way that um, that account would be able to link something in their story. But unfortunately, um, prior to the fall, you would have to have 10,000 or more followers um, on Instagram to be able to have the swipe up feature, but now it's open to everybody, which I think is very, 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 very exciting, especially when you're promoting your library programs. Um, you know, during the kind of start of the pandemic, when this feature wasn't available, we kept on saying, either go to the link in our bio uh, to access the calendar, or we would say, go to our calendar on our website. And, you know, we are humans, and we like things kind of given to us. So I, I think that you have a higher chance of somebody clicking while they're in that story with the link there, than telling them to go on their own to your, to your website. 
Um, one uh, tool that I wanted to mention here for uh, creating stories, but even scheduling your social media in general, I'm not sure what platform um, each of you use as a scheduler, but uh, my team and I for a while now have been using a free tool directly from Facebook called Facebook Creator. And we do all of our Facebook and Instagram scheduling through Facebook Creator. Unfortunately, there isn't right now a way to do stories directly through Facebook Creator, but they do have a very, very easy way to create stories for Facebook in Facebook Creator. So if you've not used it before, it is free and it is easy to use, and I would not be surprised in the future um, that there would be an Instagram story component. Some other ideas um, in regards to utilizing stories in both Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm sure you could think of probably many, many other ideas if once you kind of submerge yourself in, in stories, but I've seen a lot of libraries uh, do reader's advisory. They'll do what's called a mini book match. Um, quizzes, there's like a, a surveys feature where you could have two options and you can click, you know, yes or no. And after you've clicked yes or no, you would even see the percentage of uh, whoever um, actually did the survey where, you know, the percentages lay. Um, we also, in regards to the quizzes, we've done a love it or hate it um, Instagram story just to kind of get um, our followers engaged and um, you can even promote local resources. I did see a, a, a library in the Chicagoland area that at the, you know, kind of the start of the pandemic was sharing on their Instagram story posts from their local park district, their um, uh, village, um, you know, just kind of sharing local resources, which I think uh, is a really quick and easy way with a click of a button to, to, you know, kind of spread the word on some, you know, maybe some community organizations that you're partnering with. Um, but I do want to say, and I'm not sure if all of you um, who are utilizing stories are kind of seeing the same trend, is I definitely see a lot more people, because you can see how many people have seen your stories, of um, our followers watching our stories more than they're actually liking our posts. So, um, you know, so it's kind of nice to, to, to see and to differentiate and to, you know, that maybe that'll change something in your strategy of, you know, maybe doing less posts, more stories, or a mix of both. Um, but uh, I really like that I'm able to see how many people have viewed the story. Location, location, location. So this is another kind of quick and easy um, addition to uh, while you're creating your posts on social media. Um, there, there is a way to do this also on Facebook, but I would say primarily I do this on Instagram, where as you can see right above, uh, or I should say right underneath our um, Instagram handle, you'll see Niles, Illinois. So uh, Instagram does have an option, like I said, Facebook does too, but I think Instagram works a lot better um, with this option where you could add a location. So our two choices would be probably Niles, Illinois, um, or and the other choice is Niles Main District Library as a location. So what I like about adding our location is anyone on Instagram that searches Niles, Illinois or Niles Main District Library will see all posts, ours and others who have uh, tagged us, like tag the location as one of those two. Um, so I think it's an easy way to reach more people because those that are interested in searching, they might think that you know your image or video is something that's appealing and eye-catching, and then they'll click on it, and then you know the hope is that it'll build on your engagement. Maybe they'll um, interact with you. Maybe they'll start following you. But for me, it takes two seconds to do, so why not? Um, I would say on a more kind of personal level. Um, you know, when I'm planning a vacation with my family, or if I want to even just do something local, like uh, go to the zoo or a museum uh, locally, uh, besides going to those organizations, websites, and reading blogs, and all, asking your friends about those places, I actually love going into Instagram and searching their location to see what other people that are going to those establishments are taking pictures of, if it's a new exhibit, if it's a light show, just so I can kind of see directly from the people 
and from their posts, um, you know, what's going on and, you know, what can I expect when I, when I go to those places. Tagging organizations in posts. Now, this is something that I would definitely do only for special, special, special messages. Um, you know, since the start of the pandemic, there's definitely been a lot of special messaging that would be very important to spread throughout the community as fast as possible. Um, and it, it, the example here on the right hand side is on Facebook, where it was a pandemic related post that um, uh, you know, we tagged all of um, all of these organizations. This one, actually, now that I see Rails and American Library Association, um, I think that there was a bigger message that was going on. That we, we uh, my my team and I did a lot of really really cool things um, while we were at home, um, and we wanted to kind of spread the word of the great work that we were doing. So um, so we tagged all of those pages. You can also do this on Instagram. But, um, you know, what your goal of this would be that A, whoever's managing their pages sees this information, what, but what you really want them to do is to share this information to actually get the word out about whatever you're trying to promote. Um, so that's why I say do not oversaturate. I don't want to overuse, I would not want to overuse this tactic, but, um, you know, it doesn't have to even be this many uh, you know, local organizations. Uh, we have a battle of the books competition at our um, library for, I believe it's like fourth and fifth graders. And, you know, recently the, uh, one of the uh, schools in our school district won. So I would just tag the school district and, you know, the school if they have uh, a social media account just to kind of get the word out there. Testimonials. Now, you know, I don't know if all of you share the same kind of thought as, as me, but um, you know, sometimes we get bogged down into always need, needing to promote certain things, right? We get emails about, you need to promote my program, you need to promote this online resource, you need to promote all these kind of typical library things. But I think mixing in some testimonials is very, 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 very important. Um, I would say even especially if you live in a community where there are community members that don't believe there is any value in having a library in the community. Um, I think continuing to share testimonials, whether it be on social media, but through an e-newsletter, um, I mean, even on your outdoor digital sign, if you can fit testimonials. I mean, just kind of spreading that positive word about the library. And it's actually not us marketers saying we're doing great things. It's actually the people, the taxpayers, the patrons that are coming in your building. Um, so some kind of easy ways to get testimonials because they could be hard sometimes, especially since you know we uh, typically, I think, work behind the scenes or we're not, as I say, on the front lines to kind of retrieve all that information. But you know, any sort of positive social media comments can be turned into a quote, uh, Google reviews, um, I love checking our monthly board reports because each supervisor needs to put together a report and um, usually the supervisors do add some patron comments and suggestions so um, that's kind of an, was is always an easy way for us to get some some quotes. Um, maybe there's um, some comments from a virtual program or in person program um, that you could take and turn into um, you know a graphic like you see on the right hand side. Um, you could also, of course, ask staff members to send photos and comments, but sometimes, you know, I can understand being, you know, at the front desk and it being kind of crazy to remember to, you know, email Sasha a picture or a comment is not always something that um, can happen. That's why there are these other avenues that are um, kind of easy ways to, to grab that information. So um, our graphic designer made this really, really nice graphic that we've been using um, since the pandemic started. So I love this quote um, from this library patron says, I never realized how much I missed the library, um, that I missed the library on a Sunday afternoon. So um, a question that I would probably ask if we were in person is, can you take a wild guess when we scheduled this post on a Sunday afternoon? And you know, it resonated with a lot of patrons who missed coming to the library on a Sunday afternoon, we used to be open one to five. Um, we're open 12 to five now. So they get an extra bonus hour, but you know, during the time when we were closed, um, and even when we reopened, we were closed on Sundays still. So um, 
you know, I thought this testimonial was a really powerful one that was posted at a really good time. Getting creative. I mean, a lot of what I'm talking about here today is about creativity in some which way, whether it's with your words, whether it's visually, whether it's getting creative with any of these, you know, specific tools that I'm mentioning today. Um, but I wanted to show some really, really um, creative uh, things that um, my library and some other libraries have done. Um, I like this book display on the left hand side um, that uh, is promoting mask wearing. So um, this is someone from our digital services department who I believe with the vinyl cutter cut out these masks and put them on the books, which I thought was really, really cute. Um, I love this one from the Lake Bluff Library. Uh, the geese are like part of their logo. You know, I've never been to the Lake Bluff Library, so I'm not sure if there's a lot, a lot of geese on the land. I have no idea, but um, but uh, usually their logo is, I think the geese are like next to each other with that book kind of open. So I love, 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 love when libraries, um, you know, flip their branding into something creative like this, you know, showing the, the, the six feet social distancing. So um, I, I really, really, really like seeing that. Um, a couple other ways to get creative to promote your library. I love this, um, and you're only seeing one picture, unfortunately, it was a series of these stuffed animals on the left-hand side. Um, as I mentioned before, with kind of always having to promote the same old things to get the word out about the same old things, let me tell you, your followers are going to think that you're boring. They're not going to want to follow you anymore. They, they, they want... That's why I think it's important with everything is balance, right? We have to promote those things to know that we're promoting them, but I think also putting in some fun, fresh, different content that's going to make them stop as they're scrolling on their phone or if they're on their desktop computer. Here is a great, great example that, um, you know, if you are from a public library that you could probably do very, very, very soon. So um, this picture uh, was originally from a program that our youth services department had, which was called the teddy bear sleepover. So you would drop off your teddy bear and then the teddy bear would sleep over, but, you know, uh, but the librarian would take pictures of the, the teddy bears throughout the library kind of causing havoc or, you know, you, you know, using the self checkout machine or being in the library van driving it kind of thing. So, um, so, you know, a lot of different fun scenarios throughout the library that I think would really, really engage your community and think that you're doing something very clever. Um, the kind of, I don't know what the word is, the hack is unfortunately we did not post these pictures when we probably should have, which was following the teddy bear sleepover. But when I was thinking about content um, at the start of, this was during the start of the pandemic, was um, kind of the reason that the pictures were, being, were so universal in their use is because the library was closed at the time. And, you know, what are all those stuffed animals that the kids love to play with when they would come in the building? So we were still able to kind of utilize the photos um, it's a kind of showcase. This is what the bears are doing while the library is closed. Um, so no one needed to know that they were from a different program and, and, and they were like a very, very, very huge, huge hit. So um, if you have a youth services department in your public library, I think this would be a very, very easy and clever um, uh, social media post for you to do. Um, on the right hand side, there was a time where everyone on social media was joking about what their spring break plans were, and they had different apps like Netflix and Amazon and Hulu. So um, I uh, worked with one of our graphic designers to flip it into kind of like library land content and promote some of our online resources and even our own app. Um, so, you know, one thing that I always say is we are a library, right? We, we work at a library where we're used to, you know, borrowing materials, right? So there's nothing wrong with being inspired by either another library, by a, a social media account that you follow yourself, or if they're a social media influencer, and kind of taking your own spin on, on what's, what's out there. You know, we see that a lot with memes, uh, we sometimes don't know where some of those memes have generated from, but all the accounts are using them. You know, I think they're usually crediting the, the individual that they 
you know, borrowed it from, but I think being, there's nothing wrong with some inspiration and trying to find, um, you know, your library in the mix of, of, of all that. Showcasing your staff. So this also falls in the same category as like the teddy bears of, you know, breaking kind of the monotony of the same kind of posts that you're, you know, expected to, to, to post about. I love, love, love showcasing your staff. Any, any, time, any chance that I get, um, uh, you know, for a few reasons. One, um, familiar faces are also, are always very pleasant to see, um, especially if you've not been to the library in, in a while, um, to see like, oh, Miss Marianne, she's still working there. Like, yay, I was wondering if XYZ was still there. Um, so um, I think viewing your staff as superstars, as celebrities in a way, um, and, 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 you know, using that celebrity to promote something at the library is really a win-win because you're showcasing to the community that the library, that the librarians are, are working and doing their jobs and, um, you know, staying active, um, whether the building is closed, whether it's open, like we are still, you know, here and we're still serving the community. Um, but it is also a great way um, to promote your collection and also show some behind the scenes. Um, actually, I think tomorrow is like fun at your work day, um, one of my staff members told me. So it might be a great time even tomorrow to take some pictures of some staff members at the desk or behind the scenes, you know, just kind of showcasing their love for their work and their jobs. And um, I'm sure that it'll be something this week that would get a lot of attention. So as you see here um, on the left-hand side, um, we uh, launched a big a binge box collection. I'm not sure if some of you have, have these. These are from Midwest Tape, um, where we created a display. And, you know, sometimes something like the mask display, you know, maybe just taking a display and posting it could get some attention because it's unique. But I feel like most times just taking a picture of a display and posting it, you know, you never know really how much attention you're going to get. So instead of just posting the picture of this table with these materials, we did ask, this is Mary Ellen, she's one of our adult services librarians, to just pose for us um, to help promote the binge boxes. And I guarantee if you um, do not have this as something that's in your strategy, um, I would definitely utilize it um, as much as I as much as as much as you can. And I understand some staff members are shy; they don't want to be on camera, they don't want to be on any sort of social social, social network, which is fine. Um, but I think you know building trust and making them comfortable, but then also just kind of having in your back pocket, um, the library staff members that don't have a problem, you know, with showing their face online, um, that you could kind of have them, um, you know, in your back pocket to help promote, you know, because the way that I see it is it's a win-win. Um, you know, the binge boxes come from adult services. So, um, you know, they're helping promote their own collection. So um, it's kind of a win, a win-win. Um, on the right-hand side, we have Maureen. We uh, moved our holds. Um, for a period of time. So it was just taking, instead of me taking a picture of uh, the, 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 the shelves of, of holds, which aren't that exciting, you know, getting Maureen who works at the front patron services desk that people probably see a lot when they come into the building and they're checking out their materials, um, you know, kind of showcases the staff that kind of personal side, but also we're promoting that the holds have moved. What's trending? Now, um, I think it is very, very, very important. Um, sometimes, and you know, we're talking about out of the box, right? So what does out of the box mean? It means sometimes stepping out from your typical day-to-day -day routine to try to figure out how to promote um, your library or a specific service or a program. And um, there are a bunch of, um, ideas that other libraries have shared online. I'm sure you can search them, but I wanted to just show a couple examples of utilizing something that was trending at that time to promote um, their library. So um, I'll start with the one on the left. Um, this is uh, 
So in 2020, so in 2020, my team and I won the John Cotton Dana Award for our best deal ever library card campaign. And the premise of the library card campaign was showcasing um, all the different uh, online resources and services uh, and materials that were available to card holders and kind of showcasing how much you would save by not actually you know, purchasing them on Amazon or downloading them on Amazon, um, and um, that you would not have to pay anything technically um, to get these items. So um, this was in late 2020, where um, I think it was in my bio, but one personal kind of tidbit about myself is I am a deal hunter. So not a deer hunter, but a deal hunter. And I love clearance. And I love, um, my favorite thing is getting things at 90% off, which is so possible. And I should probably put a presentation together on that to, to, to kind of share that wealth of information with everybody. Um, so uh, I remember as a kid, when Black Friday wasn't what it is today, which is really kind of nothing, in my opinion, where on Thanksgiving, you would go to the local gas station, you'd get the newspaper, and before we even ate the turkey, we would take all the ads out and spread out who's going to go where to buy what thing to make sure we got everything we wanted, um, you know, that was on sale. So, um, you know, I, you know, with kind of writing on the coattails of the success of Best Deal Ever, something kind of clicked upstairs. And I, I pitched to our executive director and my boss um, at the time that it would be so cool if we were able to totally throw out our typical newsletter design and create a Black Friday type ad that, was, that, was, that would be, uh, or say like a brochure, that would be mailed out um, in place of our typical style newsletter. So they really liked the idea. And, you know, we, we put this together very, very, very quickly. You can see it on the library's website if you want to see the full, the full um, version of it. But, uh, you know, the tagline was Seasons Dealings instead of Seasons Greetings. And, um, you know, we, like I said, threw out our typical design. We, uh, you know, worked with our printer to get like a a cheaper paper that we're kind of familiar with, with the ads that come in the mail or that are in the newspaper. And even the size was a little bit more square. You know, we had a, a target ad that we had as our example, and we wanted to try to mimic that as best as possible. So as you can see kind of on the screen, we um, showcase uh, our special collections that you would not typically think a library has, for example, um, uh, technology equipment that you could check out and take home, uh, like a projector, you can watch a movie at home, or a GoPro if you're going on a vacation, and showcasing like how you would see on a Target ad that the GoPro costs $250 or whatever the price is, but we would actually say save $250 compared to Target.com by using your library card. And this was a huge, huge hit for us. Um, uh, that, you know, got a, we got a lot of phone calls that people had no idea we had certain certain pieces of equipment. And, um, you know, probably of all of my years in, in, in the library world, this is probably my most favorite uh, promotion that we've ever done. Uh, you should also Google the New York Public Library. They typically jump on uh, the Black Friday bandwagon, and they, I think, uh, they do like a full page color ad in the New York Times. A lot of, a lot of really fun stuff if you're looking for some inspiration. Now, I saw the picture on the right hand side recently on a library uh, marketing Facebook page, and I don't know how many of you out there are playing Wordle. I am not, so I cannot tell you anything besides I recognize, you know, the the graphic of the, you know words with friends meet Scrabble, you know, kind of look. But I, I love this idea that people are talking about Wordle now, they're playing Wordle, and that a library is jumping on what's trending to, um, you know, promote themselves. So if you are playing it, you're probably one step ahead of me in figuring out what would be a, a fun and smart way to, to utilize that to promote your library. Press record. I'm sure many of us did not dip into the video world prior to um, the pandemic, but you know, with getting everybody on online with everything, probably most of us have started doing video in some which way, shape, or form. Um, 
Facebook and Instagram give you a, a few really, really great and easy tools like going live on either one of them. As we mentioned, stories, um, Instagram has kind of um, copied TikTok uh, in what they call reels, um, which are you know similar to stories in regards to their shortness, but um, they're kind of these like quick videos about whatever you want to promote. Um, the only thing that I would say about reels that this is just my opinion, if you've not dipped or if you have dipped in reels is we are very, very selective about what we want to promote on reel on um, using Instagram reels, because just like TikTok, Instagram reels, yes, your followers will see that reel, but it kind of gets dumped into this ginormous universe that, um, kind of exceeds your followers. So we don't typically promote things that are super duper 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 specific, but something that's a little broad that if other people outside of our community saw and they thought it was funny, clever or whatever, um, like we're okay with that. But you know, we have this mindset of we need to serve our community, you know, they are the taxpayers. And, you know, we really don't get a lot of benefit if somebody in California, you know what I mean, is liking our, our, our reels, our stories and, you know, our posts. Um, but if you've not dipped in video, a couple really easy um, uh, kind of uh, examples of what you could do is putting your library staff out there and promoting uh, books, you know, book recommendations, services. I think I have an example here. I'll show a quick video that are very, very, very talented. He's no longer works at the library, but He's, um, he became a little bit of our, 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 our superstar, kind of like low from um, Progressive. It was Jason from Digital Services was our deals guy. And he actually wrote um, this song and even composed it in the whole bit. Um, it's very, very short. So I'll show a little bit of it since we're kind of. That's made district library, serving the community. Even at home, would you believe? Resources for you and me. So there's a lot more to it, but I just, I'm looking at the clock. So if, if, um, I know all these slides are available somewhere um, post conference or during the conference. I do have links to this video and a couple other videos um, from the library. library. This one's also a good one. I don't know if you've seen it before, but it's Curbside Larry. Very, very awesome uh, video that was done during the pandemic. Um, a, uh, and I think I have one more uh, video, so please download uh, my slides and um, they're all linkable with the videos. Hey! Okay, so um, while we're still on the topic of video, um, I'm not sure if any of you do programs or, you know, any, any virtual, if you're responsible for any virtual programs that are done on Zoom, but um, I, one kind of tactic to kind of spread the wealth of our virtual programming is from time to time, we will stream a program from Zoom directly to Facebook or YouTube. Most, most times Facebook, I would say more times Facebook than, than YouTube, but there are those two options. And what I like about this is um, when you do uh, share something from Zoom on Facebook, for example, it automatically um, notifies all of your followers that the Niles Bain District Library is live. Um, and, you, you know, there is, a, there is a place to put like what you're live about. So if it's like a, a singer or a performer um, or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, they will get notified of what that, what that program is. Um, I like that I could actually share that video while it's live um, and even after because it goes into a video archive, but more specifically when it's live to, we have a few community Facebook groups, so I share them to those groups to try to get more reach um, on probably some people that maybe don't care about the library, they don't really look at the newsletter, but um, you know, they're interested in whatever the program is and they'll watch for, you know, however long they, they watch. So um, I would say, you know, maybe you want to add this as a strategy to kind of boost um, the reach of how many people have, you know, attended that virtual program or watched that virtual program. 
in the community. So there are both virtual and in-person um, opportunities and options for promoting the library virtually and in the community. So virtually, uh, I'm not sure about your community. As I mentioned, we have a few Facebook groups where sometimes they're a dumpster fire. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes they are um, a really, really great place to promote the library. You know, I would say more times it's for non-users than users, because, um, you know, they're talking about new restaurants or any sort of drama in the community. So, you know, they are alert and interested and invested in these Facebook groups. So why not promote your library within those Facebook groups? Similar um, uh kind of thing is next door, um, which um, we haven't really personally utilized a lot, but I do know other local organizations um, that use next door. It's kind of similar to like the Facebook group where, you know, you can post about the library and there are people that comment and make threads on different topics. Um, maybe you want to check out if your um, village or municipality um, has a community calendar that you'd be able to, you know, uh, post or if you have to send it to them, um, maybe like five programs you really want to promote this next season or quarter, you know, cycle. Um, our village has a TV channel, so there are times for special programs where they have a form that you fill out to promote um, you know, we promote our kind of special events or a, a new service. So um, I would definitely look into um, seeing if your community has um, either a community calendar or a TV channel that you could um, uh, promote the library on. In-person options. Um, you know, I would definitely look at a community calendar in regards to what are the big community events um, that happen annually. I've been personally on some planning groups and committees. So over the years, I've been kind of more and more aware ahead of time of what's coming in the village so that the library could prepare if they're interested in um, participating. So uh, probably the biggest event in our community is the 4th of July parade, uh, where unfortunately 2020, they did not have it, but it did come back this past um, July in 2021. And I've been overseeing our participation and kind of the creative director, if you will, of, of what message is the library trying to put out to the community. So of all the many years that I've been kind of overseeing our uh, Parade participation, I would probably say this past year was our greatest um, and most successful um, participation. And there's a picture right there on the right hand side where, um, you know, I would say when in doubt, get balloons, right? <laughs> you know, we see them when we go to stores and they have a promotion, they just have a few balloons, you're kind of like, oh, they must be celebrating something. Well, what we were celebrating was summer reading. Um, I, um, I'm sure some of you have, did the Reading Colors Your World theme. So we, as you can see in this picture, really, really blew the color thing, you know, kind of out of the park. And we're, you know, we, we're used to um, having these like signs that were double-sided um, that would have some sort of promotion about the library. But I was just like, I'm just so, got sick of it. It like reminded me that we were protesting something. So um, this year, we just had one message, which you see it's read. That's it. We just want you to read. We want you to know the library is a fun place, um, an exciting place, and that you should you should come to the library. You should get a library card. And uh, we got so many positive compliments um, from community members, and even the head of the parade from the village said that we were we were the best. So that was a nice compliment from her. So I would say try balloons. But if everything fails, try balloons. Um, uh, there, there are some times where there are community events, and if you don't have staff members that are able to participate in those events, that maybe you could ask, can I add a tchotchke to your giveaway bag? Um, or can I, you know, drop off some make and take crafts? Um, you know, there's a lot of, lot of options uh, for in-person. Um, sometimes I think you just need to maybe go into those, in, in those facilities and see, like, are there places for flyers that you could drop off or your newsletter? Um, and kind of put that in your routine. Community partnerships, um, you know, uh, 
very, very important. Um, if you are not, um, you know, well connected with your village, township, schools, park district, um, you know, uh, in Niles, we have something called the Niles Communicators Group. So anyone that's a communications professional in one of the local, you know, organizations, uh, we meet uh, on a monthly basis and kind of give everyone a heads up of what's to come, how we can work together. Um, so if, um, uh, if you, do not have that group and are interested, maybe you'd want to start one and reach out to the communications professionals in your community. Kind of a quick and, um, you know, somewhat easy, I would say, um, thing to do with your website um, that I think, I think is kind of out of the box because I think sometimes the website, you know, sometimes becomes a little bit of an afterthought because there's just so many other kind of more important uh, tools that you need to update on a daily basis or weekly basis. But um, I think it would be very, very beneficial um, that if you are uh, responsible for updating the website, that you take a look at your analytics and see what your top five uh, most popular web pages are on your website. Go to those web pages and see if there is any opportunity that like sometimes like some websites, they have the like columns on the right hand side or left hand side or wherever, where you could add some promotions um, that that are going on at your library. And kind of rework those pages, not necessarily like the information on those pages, or maybe depending upon how your website's laid out, but if there's a way that you could add a module uh, or a widget promoting an online resource or a service, I mean, anything, um, because the people are coming to these pages and if you're not utilizing them um, to your greatest advantage, um, you know, there's a little bit of a loss there, you know, um, as you can see on the, on the right hand side, the number one is our homepage, number two is, you know, coronavirus, uh, online resources, using the library, and our no-contact holds pickup. Um, I'm sure that our top five has changed. This was, uh, the screenshot is from a, a time, uh, but uh, take a look and see. You know, I think that there would be a lot of benefit to, to um, tweaking those pages a little bit. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to move on um, to more online options um, that I think are out of the box. Because um, sometimes, you know, we go in the box and we think Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, whatever the case may be, but there are some outside of the box um, options. Uh, maybe you want to consider um, a online event site like Eventbrite, which um, I believe is free to post on um, if you want to reach a different demographic. Maybe you want to try to reach your 20s and 30s crowd. Um, and Eventbrite might be the place for that. Um, you know, just I would maybe put only a few programs so they're easy to monitor. Um, but it might give you a, a, you know, you put a link to your online calendar from there. And um, it might be something that's worth trying. There's other online calendar services. There's even like meetup.com that might be a, a great place to uh, promote something from your library. Um, one uh, thing that we've been utilizing more and more is the options that Google gives us via our Google business page. Um, one, as you see on the right hand side here, uh, is a Google, um, I think they call it like a post, uh, which if anybody searches Niles Main District Library, Niles Library, Niles Public Library, um, you'll, you know, where you see like our hours and our website underneath there, you'll see whatever post you, you, you post. So this was in regards to our season's dealings promotion, uh, looking for a deal, sign up for announcement district library card, and you will also get emails and analytics of how many people were reached um, and how many people looked at it. Some more um, promotional um, options. Um, there's some good ones here. So I wanna make sure I'm looking at my clock here and make sure we have enough time for questions, but um, Maybe one thing to consider um, is to promote your programs in a group or a theme. For example, uh, next month, we have a uh, internal committee that's working on uh, Black History Month, where we have an, uh, an exhibit that we're going to be hosting and programs and a lot of displays throughout the library. Um, so, you know, instead of, you could promote them all individually, but, you know, if you want to do one post of kind of promoting them all, kind of similarly to this graphic where we, uh, these were virtual programs that we recommended for that week, um, 
Uh, so, you know, just kind of putting them into a clump so that uh, your followers can see the a variety. Um, if you do not utilize this or you don't know because you're not a programmer, I would ask um, the department heads if there is a script that their staff members say before or after a program and, um, you know, promote, you know, and seeing what the script is. And if they're not promoting future programs, if they're not promoting something that's new at the library, tell them, please, please, please. It's very, very important that we um, promote these because you're promoting directly to the people who cared enough to register for this event and watch it either virtually or, or you know, come in person. If you are still doing curbside pickup, making sure that um, a somewhat timeless flyer or two gets stuffed in each bag. Um, you know, I think like winter reading is a good example of that. Um, you know, if you're, if it's still going on or if summer reading is coming up and it's a longer period of time in case you forget, um, you know, that it needs to get updated or something like that. So it's something a little timeless. Um, our self checkout machines allow us to put advertisements. So the screen kind of gets a little smaller and an advertisement can run. So I would say utilizing um, your self checkout machines because people are coming to them. They have to see that screen before, you know, they put in their library or they scan their library card. So why not put some promotions there? Um, our um, board meetings, they are in person, but we do still stream them. So uh, during executive session, we've started recently uh, putting up slides of our posters um, for, for programs because people are invested in watching the meetings. Why not take that space? That would just be a blank screen saying board meeting and executive session um, and actually promoting something of the library. And last but not least, so kind of these pro other promotional options is starting a contest that would get the word out about the library and um, about, you know, whatever the contest may be, you know, maybe it's a bookmark contest, maybe it's a pumpkin carving contest in the fall. Um, one contest that we are going to be running again um, coming up is a newsletter cover art contest to help promote summer reading. So um, not only is it kind of pre publicity and pre-promotion of, uh, uh, of summer reading, but it also gets, I think we did it all ages last year, it kind of gets the community involved to get creative um, while also having summer reading on their mind. All right, so some last minute tips. You can't promote everything, but you can try. You, know, you can try to combine you know, uh, uh, programs and, and promotions to try to get as much word out as possible. Where are the people in your community? go there, post things there, see if you can leave flyers at those locations. Um, challenge yourself to do something new. If you learned at least one new thing here, maybe add it in the next 30 days that you will add to your strategy. Um, you know, not everybody wants to attend a virtual program or in-person program and that's okay because we get pushed a lot, promote my program, promote my program. And it's not always marketing's fault if the program um, is not well attended. And last but not least, think outside the box. Thank you all very much for your time today. Thank you so much. Uh, that was really a lot of really fun ideas. Um, and we have a few questions stacked up. Um, I encourage you to um, add additional questions if you have them. But um, we did get a, a question about um, whether or not when you're um, turning social media comments into um, testimonials, do you ask permission before before using those or using people's names? Yeah, for the for the example there, we did. Um, you know, because we did take it from social media. I think what things that we find in the board packets are usually like suggestions that patrons wrote out. You know, you have suggestion boxes throughout the library. So yes, for the for the social media ones, out of courtesy, we do try to to. But you know, we are just adding their first name. We're not really adding a lot of you know secret things or anything like that. But yeah, it is a nice courtesy to to message them. Okay, thank you. And kind of related to that. Um, uh, about staff photos and videos on on the website or on social media, um, someone pointed out that there are some people for whom um, it's a sort of a it's a safety reason they have safety reasons for not wanting to be on social media. So, if you 
do you find do you find that it's pretty easy to find volunteers to from the staff and do you have any suggestions about that yeah it's it's a mix it's definitely a mix but i would say because i've worked at this particular library for so long and everyone knows me it's it's really about the trust it's about trust and i think it's about making them feel comfortable you know that you're not this like you know producer you know what i mean you know, big shots, but really you're just a person and you have to kind of talk them through that we both have this goal of promoting the library. You know, if we don't promote the library, if we don't work together, the people won't know about it and then we both lose, you know? So I would say trust and, you know, just kind of, you know, respecting their space and, you know, usually yeah. that usually that helps. That's great. And I loved your point before about that for a lot of, for a lot of our library users, especially when we're closed, that seeing those familiar library faces is actually wonderful. And it doesn't matter if you feel like you're having a bad hair day, they don't care, they really wanna see you. So it's kind of good to, is, that's a kind of reassuring thing to remember that you're the, you, you are, you know, the staff is who people wanna see, so. Well, one um, thing that I want to mention is yeah. I, I don't know who um, went to the uh, presentation before mine, my wonderful library friend, Angela Hirsch, when I actually went to one of her, she spoke at one of our um, mini conferences for the Illinois Library Association. And she, I believe, used to work for a news channel. I think she was a producer. And, you know, she was comparing when she worked on the TV, on the news channel, uh, the news station, like how videos needed to be compared to the videos that she made when she was working in, in a library. And she said that viewers are so forgiving nowadays, you know, compared to like thinking that like everyone has to get like, you know, the makeup, the hair, the whatever. It's like they just want to see you. They want to see that familiar face. And I don't know if anyone, you know, has young kids that are watching, you know, these YouTube kids that are making this content with their families. And it's like none of them are using you know, the camera James Cameron used while he filmed Avatar. I mean, they're using their phones, they're using, you know, a Canon, whatever, 4K camera. I mean, nothing that we we all couldn't get. So um, people are forgiving of, you know, things not being well lit and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> right. I, I feel like we can't really, can't really actually compete with Netflix. So if we can make it authentic and, and real, right. that's, some, that's kind of refreshing sometimes. Cool. Um, Another question just generally about favorite design tools for making some of those beautiful things that you um, have used. Yeah, um, we primarily, you know, since we, we were lucky to have a graphic designer on hand, you know, she primarily just uses InDesign. Um, there was a Q&A about Canva. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there even is, uh, we utilize Library Aware for some of their um, features. Um, they do have some graphic features as well um, for any of anyone in the audience today that that has a subscription to them. Um, but, you know, we haven't dipped into the Canva world, but I, um, I hear a lot of great things, a lot of very easy ways to do things. And maybe as time goes on, we would add that into the mix of things. I think our struggle is how do you organize everything? You know, when you want to find that graphic and it's like, did I do it on camera? Did I do it in the library? Did I do it on my, on the shared drive at work? So we try to keep things simple for remembering. So we kind of stick to the, the tools we know for, but yes, you could definitely use Canva. And, and, and I think that's probably the number one tool right now. Excellent. And just as a reminder, there is going to be a Canva demo at noon. So if, you, if you're if you looking for some tips, uh, we have a local expert, Coles Roslick, who's gonna do a little walkthrough of some Canva tips um, and it'll be pretty informal. So, um, and I am not seeing any other questions right off, uh, right? right now and we're running low on time. So I'm just going to wrap it up. So thank you so much, Sasha. That was a really great session and we're getting lots of um, thank yous in the comments. I hope you're seeing those. Um, and uh, I just want to let folks know that our next session in this track is with Jennifer Burke and it begins at one o'clock. It's about uh, more than press releases. So hopefully that will be um, useful to you and um, we'll maybe see you at one of those. And if not, I hope you have a great rest of your day. And thanks again, Sasha. Thank you very much, everybody. And my emails in the slides, feel free to email me, find me online. If you have any questions, I, I love chatting. So thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Terrific.